as others have said this afternoon, an extraordinary privilege, really, to be asked to speak today. Um, so I'm immensely grateful, Helena and, and Richard, for that opportunity. Um, Aubrey's contribution to the International Association for Dental Research, of which I was at one point president, um, has been quite remarkable. And the current president, Mark Heft, has asked me today to say just how much Aubrey has meant to the organization. And I will go on in a minute to explain uh, what that role has been, because it's been present for a period of more than 50 years. Um, it also gives me a chance to acknowledge the immense personal impact that Aubrey's had, Aubrey's had on me, and I can't pass up the opportunity to, to mention that. Um, the first time I met Aubrey was when I was a clinical dental student at the London in the late 60s. Thank you, George, for that ageist remark. Um, <laughs> at that stage, Aubrey was a, was a periodontist, um, but a very unusual periodontist. He was one of a group of... Uh, really challenging, interesting, radical young South Africans who had left South Africa, as we've heard earlier today, came to the London and was such a breath of fresh air. At that stage, education was very much on the basis of being told, this is the thing to do because in my clinical judgment that works. And Aubrey turned that around completely and I can't, well, others I see nodding. I mean, that resonated with me to an incredible extent. And it changed my mind because at that stage I was thinking, I've had this with dentistry, I think I'd be much better off having gone to university and read English, which is what I plan to do first anyway. And Aubrey encouraged me to think differently about the profession. Um, and that's, you know, me standing here, I guess, is, is a result of that. Um, but then, as, again, as George has alluded to, Aubrey and I have worked together, again, very closely in the last five, six years or so, encouraging the International Association for Dental Research to take this issue of health inequalities more seriously. Uh, and to their great credit, the organization has rallied around that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But first, I want to go back to the beginning of Aubrey's contribution uh, to the organization, it, to which he had a much greater influence than I suspect he, he realized himself. Um, he, the records show, we delved into the archives and found that the first time he spoke at a meeting of IDR was in 1980, uh, probably a member before that of the British Division. And for those who don't know, this is the organization that represents the whole span of oral and dental research worldwide. Uh, it has a membership in excess of 13,000 drawn from across all countries. And it also is the organization which, as with FDI, is in formal relationship with the World Health Organization, and I'll mention that in a moment. At the time that Aubrey joined the organization, it was very US-centric. Uh, not unusual, really, for Americans to claim the World Series of this or the International Association of that. Um, and Aubrey was one of those people who joined and fairly quickly made his presence felt uh, and began, I think, to genuinely cause the organization to think much more internationally about its role. Um, he was quickly uh, elected onto the uh, international committee of the organization and reached out to WHO, to FDI, and that partnership, which at that stage was almost tokenistic, was given impetus by his energy and his drive and has become much more powerful and influential since and, and that continues to this day. Now, the other members of the group at that time were equally um, creative, energetic, like-minded souls and they went on to become really the sort of leaders of international research over the next generation. And Aubrey played a key role in driving things forward. He contributed to the development, as we've heard, of international measures of disease. Uh, first of all, periodontal disease and its progression, and his comment to, that Sam read out just now was informed by that thinking way, way before. But as we've heard, from, he's also been involved very much with the development of other metrics as well, and very central to the way the organization's thought about itself. Uh, at the time, he 
made a contribution at the meeting in Chicago. The minutes of that meeting state a recommendation, they quote a, a recommendation of Aubrey's, and he said, members will draw up a list of senior researchers and institutions who would be prepared to accept graduates to carry out research. And he then went on to say, and they should compile a list of funding bodies and help to arrange grants for graduates from the third world. Now that, of course, is Aubrey's philosophy, the one that he's lived and which so many here are the beneficiaries of. But that was a theme that he pressed very strongly that afternoon. Um, Lois Cohen, who chaired the committee at the time, I, when I spoke to her about speaking this afternoon, she said, well, this is really Aubrey, his lifelong commitment to growing an educated, committed research cadre, drawing students from across the globe was critical. The unique way that training programs were structured to allow students to return to work and then periodically to return to UCL to complete their degrees enabled such a diverse international student body to be influenced and to uh, experience the course. We, for example, that's Lois speaking, sent one of our students to train with him. He was an out-of-the-box thinker, and many appreciated his insights and learned from them. And that, of course, was the route by which so many others have, gen have developed their career. What's interesting is that Aubrey said that all those years ago, and people listened. And the example that he set has been replicated in other key countries worldwide. And I think a lot of the international activity around uh, dental public health and its various manifestations owes a great deal to the seeds that Aubrey sowed at that time. At the beginning of the afternoon, Richard mentioned that Aubrey had been awarded two Distinguished Scientist Awards of the IDR. Now, the Distinguished Scientist Awards are the highest award that the association bestows, and they, rec they recognize outstanding contributions to research in specific areas. Uh, Aubrey was a awarded one of these twice. Uh, and it's also axiomatic that you can't receive the same award twice for the same body of work. And it's a reflection of the breadth and scope and range of Aubrey's work that he was acknowledged in more than one area. Quite a remarkable achievement. His first award was in 2001, and that acknowledged his contribution to behavioral sciences and health services research. Uh, the second one was in 2015, and I'll go on to mention that in just a moment. In 2009, recognizing the emerging importance of oral health inequalities within IDR, you might say that was a late recognition, but in 2009, the organization recognized the importance of it, and the IIDR Council sponsored an initiative to define the global oral health inequalities research agenda. Uh, and this program led to a call for action to implement a program of research which, have Im which if implemented, would have the potential to reduce oral health inequalities. Uh, Michael Marmot was one of the speakers when we launched that uh, initiative in 2010 at the international meeting in Barcelona. This was a piece of work that had been done in short time and we wanted to bring it to the attention of the association quickly. Uh, those meetings are normally planned a couple of years ahead and so I pressed late in the day for a space within the program. They said, great, you can have the day before the meeting starts. Um, which required people to arrive early. And they said, and you can have that room, and it holds about as many as this room holds. And I stood there at about 8 o'clock in the morning, wondering quite how many people we would have. By the time the meeting started, the room was absolutely packed. And the impact of what Aubrey, Michael, and others said during that day altered the tone of the rest of the meeting. And that, I think, was the moment when the organization realized that this was a matter of the highest importance. So subsequently, the council went on to uh, recognize the initiative as, a, as an IADR priority. 
And that, again, is remarkable. Normally, the organization sits back and says, yes, all research is important. It's our role to disseminate that. The difference here was that the organization said, yes, we have a role to disseminate that, but we also have a key role to have an impact on health. And that, I think, is probably the first time that the organization's taken that subsequent step. As I've said, Aubrey was one of the architects of the agenda. His influence runs through it like a thread. Uh, and it's highly fitting, therefore, that in 2015, he received his second Distinguished Scientist Award. On this occasion, it was the Global or Health Research Award, a newly uh, created award, and Aubrey indeed was the inaugural recipient of that, as, as Rona said earlier. The, Aubrey, the award, I thought, perfectly encapsulated Aubrey's lasting influence within the organization. And I'm going to end this afternoon's, uh, my contribution this afternoon, by reading from that citation. It said, for nearly 50 years, Aubrey Scheim has made significant and outstanding contributions to global oral health research, and he's been a pioneer in the field of oral health inequalities research. He has led an international program of research on the theoretical and applied nature of oral health inequalities. His seminal work on the nature of social gradients in oral health across the life course has been highly influential in determining a global research agenda. Of particular note has been his work on exploring the social determinants of population oral health inequalities and in challenging the narrow biomedical perspective that failed to acknowledge the broader societal, social and behavioural factors in oral health. Thank you.